thing. Today, we're going to talk about the grace and mercy of God. And thank you so much for being on board. Today, we're going to talk about that because we tend to forget that we have a graceful and a merciful God. Amen. The purpose of this Bible study is to encourage the people of God with the word of God. And as usual, I always make mention that you can't have a Bible study without having a Bible. So we're going to have a couple, uh, a few, as usual, a few verses that I'm going to review. And just get ready to review them. Amen. So God is graceful. God has mercy. And we have the mercy of God on our lives. Amen. And when we think of the children of Israel... As they were wandering around in the desert for those 40 years, their clothes did not wear out. Their shoes did not wear out. They had everything they needed. Even if we take a look at Psalm 78. Psalm 78 teaches us about what happened when they were in that wandering wilderness. How God gave them food. They were complaining and grumbling that they need to have meat. And in verse 23 of Psalm 78, it says, Yet he gave a command to the skies above and opened the doors of the heavens. He rained down manna for the people to eat. He gave them the grain of heaven. Human beings ate the bread of angels. He sent them all the food they could eat. Grace and mercy. God has grace and mercy on these people. He gave them so much that they could they were choking on what they wanted. We see also in 2 Samuel 24:14 where David said to God, and this is not G-O-D, but G-A-D. I am in deep distress. Yet, he says, let us fall in the hands of the Lord, for his mercy is great. But do not let me fall into human hands. David had enough sense to know that the most graceful and the most merciful person you can find is God. Yes, Pastor Teal, great word, because grace is what we're living under as well. But right now, we're just talking about the fact that God gives us everything that we need. We also see in Psalms 1, 145, verse 9. So quickly turn to 145, verse 9 of Psalm. It says, the Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he had made. That's the grace of God. And even though that we might feel like something is not going our way, and we're having problems, and we're having issues, know that God's grace still is covering us. Amen? His grace is, a, is, is more than we can ever ask or think. It's in an abundance it's over our lives. Psalms 86 5 says, You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. Even the unsaved, if they call and they ask for, for forgiveness, God is able to hear and will grant unto them his grace. Titus 3, 5 says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy. He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Mercy suits our case. Amen? Mercy suits our case. So we have grace and we have mercy. And mercy suits our case. So let's just take a look at the definition. Mercy is compassion that leads you to have mercy, which is like forgiveness. This is a quality that has to do with compassion, forgiveness, and leniency. So 
For instance, when you do something wrong and you go into the court and you throw yourself on the court and said, have mercy on me, O judge. I did not mean to speed. I did something wrong and I know it was wrong. Have mercy on me. So you're throwing yourself on the court. Well, and if convicted of a crime, you are allowed, you can ask for compassion by the judge. Well, we have a merciful father that is able to do just that. He has mercy on us. Moses, amen, he saw God's mercy in Exodus chapter 31 verse 19. Exodus 31, I'm sorry, 33 verse 19. It says, and the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you. And I, will, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. The word of God. So we have a God that will have mercy and compassion on us. All we have to do is cry out to him and ask. David also fell on God's mercy. Let's take a look at 2 Chronicles 3.30. 2 Chronicles 3.30. He said, If you return to the Lord, then your fellow Israelites and your children will be shown compassion by their captors and will return to this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and compassionate. He will not turn his face from you if you return to him. We have a compassionate and a merciful God. Jeremiah also wept, amen, and asked for mercy. And we said in 33 verse 19 of Jeremiah. So we have to believe that we have favor with God. We have to commit to studying the word of God. And we have to act like we know who we are. We have to act like we know who we are. We have a graceful, we have a merciful, we have a compassionate, we have an all-seeing, all-knowing God that's already worked everything out in our favor. Jesus is the fruit of that because he sent, God sent Jesus to come to die for us. That's showing mercy. That's giving us grace. Because without that, we'd have been going to hell in a handbasket without any redemption. Amen. In Psalms 41 4, it says, I said, Have mercy on me, Lord. Hear me, for I have sinned against you. This is David. David recognized all the things that he was doing and he was not stupid. He was sensible enough to know that he needed to throw himself on the mercy of God. I know that God would hear him and that his way of treating or repaying him would, not be, would be better than if he was to throw himself on the on human mercy. Grace. Grace. So when we take a look at uh, Romans... Let's take a look at Romans chapter 3. Okay? 3 verse 20. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. Now, let me say, say this. We know that the Ten Commandments and all the other commandments that was written was to make us conscious of our sin. But because of grace, hallelujah, we have now the fact that Jesus Christ came for us, right? He redeemed us. So we're under grace. We have to live according to the fact that we now have a redeemer that is here, that died for us. So now our life that we live is his life that he's living through us because he died for us. Amen. 
So we have to keep all that in mind and in play when we're going through this life that God is graceful. He is merciful. Now, so my brothers and my sisters, we take a look at, uh, let's take a look at Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not for yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. We can't boast about what God has done for us. We can only thank him. We can only act like we know who we are. That we were called from darkness into his marvelous light. That we have a place that he's preparing for us that no mind can tear down because it's already done. He said that he is where our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen? We need to be encouraged that doesn't matter how it gets on this side. It doesn't matter what's going on in the political arena, whatever their agendas is. God's agenda never changes. We are still His children as long as we accepted Him. And He still have a plan that cannot be thwarted by nothing the devil tried to do. We, doesn't matter how we might have bosses we don't like. We might have children that's out of order. We might have marriages that needs to be corrected. We might have a rent that we can't pay. We might have a bill that we know is out, out of control because we charge too much on our charge cards. We need to get those things under the blood. We need to know that we have mercy and we have grace with God. And if we lean into that. Oh, hallelujah. He's able to do exceedingly above more than we can ever ask or think. We also need to take a look at Acts 15, verse 11. It says, Acts 15, 11 says, No, we believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus that we are saved just as they are. We believe. We need to believe it in our hearts. Be convinced that we are saved by the blood of the Lamb. Be convinced that God is watching over you and His grace and mercy is extended to you. Be convinced no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Be convinced that greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. Be convinced that we can do all things through Christ who threatens us. Be convinced the grace and mercy of God is endless. You are accepted. You and I are accepted fully and totally accepted by God. Now and always without any conditions, without deserving it, without any question. To be accepted in the way that means that we are cherished by God. We are loved by God. We are also guarded from evil. It means that who we are, we are valued by God, honored by God, respected. It means that we don't have to earn it or to deserve it. It simply is there for us. It's our gift, a gift from God that no one can take from us. The grace of God is given to us. And it's on God's own initiative that he did that. It's an expression of his love for us. It's an expression and it's desire for us. Of God's unconditional acceptance. And nothing or no one can snatch us out of his hands. That's the nature of the God that we serve. Amen. It is just awesome. His grace and his mercy. Believe today. That grace and mercy follows you all the days of your life. And you never have to worry or stress. Take the stress glasses off. Take the headaches on the wear and tear off. And just lean back in the fact that you got the twins. Grace and mercy following you all the days of your life. And that you never have to worry about any of those things that we mentioned. So now we'll go into our prayer list and our prayer. Basil, Lydia, Melissa, Ayana, Emmett, Chrissy, Storr, Georgette, George, Romana, Galen, 
Wheat family, Giovanni Owens, Shackleford family, Corey, Valerie, Lagoya, Richard O'Neill, Owens family, Tanya, Nikki, Ronnie, Kim Loveless, Melissa, Grace Appleby, Nancy Bell. We're going to pray now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now, Father God, thanking you for your grace and your mercy for the twins that you have had that follows us all the days of our life, that gives us what we need, that, that's, that comes alongside us, that cushions us, God, that restrains us, that feeds us, that nurtures us, that allows us to know that we are yours, bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, that nothing can separate us from your love. Oh, hallelujah, God. We pray for everyone that was as mentioned on that list, God. You know what they need for those who are sick, Lord God. I pray that you'll get them out of their beds. For those who need a financial blessing, God, I pray that you'll send the dispatch the angels to remove any obstacles that's hindering them from seeing and from hearing and from receiving from you. Oh, Father God, we bind the enemy right now. We pray for this country, Lord God. We pray that you dispatch an angel to, to set up peace and to come against all the racial discord that we have in this country, Lord God, and thought, talks of, of, of bombs and, and doing things, Lord God. We bind up all this shooting in Philadelphia and all these young people, Lord God, that's being shot. And, and as the young people get ready to go back, the children, God, get ready to go back to school. Cover them with the blood of Jesus, Lord God. We pray for every school. And we pray for the families, dear God, of all that shooting that went on in Florida. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh Jesus. Do something new in the, in the hearts of men, Lord God. Oh Father God, stay the hand of the enemy. Oh, Father God, bless your people. Oh, Father God, missionaries everywhere that needs to be encouraged. We send the love and the peace to them right now, Lord God. We bind the work, oh, Father God, of the enemy. And we just thank you, Jesus, for hearing our petition. Oh, we come through the grace and the mercy. We speak into existence, Lord God, that those who hear this will receive from you all that their hearts desire. And we thank you for loving us and for making a way for us. And if there's any under the sound of my voice who don't know you for themselves, let them accept you and ask you to come into their hearts and receive you for themselves. We'll be so grateful, Lord God, to give you the praise. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. And we will give you the praise. Amen, amen, and amen. And we thank you, dear Father God, for what you're doing right now for all of us. As we so surrender Jesus to you, we thank you, we bless you, and we praise you. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we'll see you again, my friends and family, next week. Same time, 11 o'clock. God bless you. Bye-bye.